blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. speaking country Recession. and one night particularly as I heard it announced on CNN that America is in severe recession so I went to God in prayer and I said God if God's own country can be in recession if Great Britain can be in recession God, please, don't let it come here, where I am. <laughs> because we already have enough. And the Lord said to me, plain and clear, recession means turning your back to your source. When God Almighty is no more the supplier of all your needs, when your job becomes your faith that that is what we give you, what you need, you are in recession. When your bank account becomes your power, you look at the money you have in the bank, and you put your trust in it. And the money begins to drop. 
That's recession. And God said to me, wherever you go from March 1st, tell my children they will only suffer recession when they turn their back to me. And all who turn to me will never be a part of the story of recession. Open your ears and hear what I'm, I have to say tonight. The fact that you live in civilized nation doesn't make God come closer. As a matter of fact, there are more crimes in civilized nation than in poor countries. I was telling Brother Peter and Dr. Reed and the rest this afternoon, sometimes I thank God we you call the third world are not first world. Because you have problems we have never heard about. You are so civilized that your problem is complicated. <laughs> thank God. Many times I thank God too for poverty. Not because I'm happy in it, because I don't have it. But, you know, when you make a God out of your education, and make a God out of your business, and make a God out of your city, and make a God out of your roads, you forget that one man in charge of everything. But thank God, he's teaching the world now. 1960, we had four superpowers. Great Britain, Germany, Russia, and United States. By 1970, it was dropping to two and a half superpowers. It's long now the word Great Britain was pronounced last. Great Britain dropped from superpower. Germany dropped from superpower. Then by 1980, you hear United Nations say, the two superpowers, the two superpowers. And three years ago, God told me, superpower was not going to be too long. And you listen to me tonight, last year, one out of the second superpower Faded to oblivion. And that superpower finished. Remaining one superpower. And I asked them in America last week, if America is a superpower, who is she going to fight? <laughs> because you are not a superpower when you have nobody to fight. Did you hear what I'm saying? You can't let's say I'm a superpower if there's an opponent. If there's no opponent, the world have lost the word superpower. The only superpower we have now is Jesus Christ. Amen. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So I've come here tonight to this family church in Penel to talk to you about one area in your life and my life we neglect so much. That area of life we do not always remember it exists. And that is clinging to God in time of hardship. When the whole world turned against God, when the whole world lived in utter confusion and know not what to do, the Holy Spirit told me, tell your hearers, if the world break down, the saints should break forth for joy. Because the condition of health is going to grow worse for the worldly. Only those in Christ will be happier every day because they are going to learn more to anchor on God and say, God, I used to make this job my God. I have found out that my employer is in trouble. If my employer is in trouble, I'm in trouble too. Therefore, if my employer is complaining, I'm supposed to complain. But now that I have God, 
I learn to lean on God and God become my source. So God gave me a message that I do not want to jump up and down to preach it tonight. I don't want to roll on the floor. But just in case you are one of those who came here for healing while I preach tonight, take your healing there. I saw Dr. Reed ask you, how many of you are here for miracles? I saw many hands. I also saw him ask, how many of you want joy tonight? And I want to ask that question. How many of you want joy? Keep your hand up if you want joy. How many of you want victory? My God. Thank God for you. Only me. I don't want victory tonight. I don't want joy. Ask me why. I didn't hear you. Why? I have too much. <laughs> You don't look for what you have. You don't go out searching for joy when the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. You don't go looking for healing when you are well. You do not go about asking for victory when you are already more than conqueror. I had to teach our choir a song to sing. We used to sing in the choir with tears in our eyes. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the test here of my soul. We will sing it and cry and cry. And one day the Lord asked me, Do you need a glass of water? <laughs> I have given you a ministry to go around the world. How many people can you bath with this one? If I fill it up for you. And he said, turn to your Bible to John chapter 7. Don't read it. And I said, yes, Lord. And when I got there, I saw where the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And God said, how do you have river? And I apply for a cup. <laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? How can you be carrying millions of gallons of water and drums and carrying rivers within you and coming to the church in tears to beg me to fill your cup? And he said, draw out of what you have. You can bless your generation. Amen. Then I thanked him for showing me that. And that night when the prayer really went serious, I began to sing, This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. How many of you have sang that song before? You love it? Yes. Say yes. yes. I know, I'm going to catch you. <laughs> and the Lord says, Son, you have little light? I said yes. He said, I thought you are the light of the world. How can you be light of the world and be a little light? So I remove, fill my cup. I remove this little light of mine. Then one song I love most. Tell the whole world and give me Jesus. Tell the whole world and give me Jesus. And he said, the only property you have, you are telling the world to come and take from you. The world already have the world with them. And the only thing you have as my servant is me. You are asking the world to give me to you. When I send you to go and give me to them. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying to you? What is the greatest need in the world today? To give Jesus to the world. And we are singing in the church, take the whole world, and world, give me Jesus. And the world does not have Jesus to give us. And the only thing we have, we are asking the world to give us. So, I, I, I removed that from my song. Choir, are you hearing me tonight? I took that away. 
Then the song, soon and very soon. <laughs> and the Lord, the Lord said to me, I ask you to occupy till I come. Why do you want to go soon and very soon? <laughs> now if you fly away, and I'm coming down, if our flight misses on the way, who are you going to meet in heaven? So I removed soon and very soon to become occupied till I come. Then I fly away. Lazy people fly away. Godly people stay to do the work. Are you here with me tonight? That's five songs I have removed from my head. I don't fly away. I stand and say, devil come and I teach you a lesson. Somebody say amen. amen. No sooner, very soon. The Bible didn't say you should come quickly. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. And if you are going to go quickly, when you get there, tell him I'm still here. <laughs> Don't go away. Say amen. amen. Matthew chapter 14. <clears throat> Verse 22. Straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side. While he sent the multitudes away. I have spent one week preaching on who are the disciples and who is a multitude. Why did Jesus constrain the disciples and dismiss the multitude. In a church like this one, are you a disciple or a multitude? How do I know a multitude? Multitude in a church come to sit on a chair arranged. Disciples arrange it. Multitude come late and go first. Disciples come first and go last. Multitude complain. Disciples compliment. Multitude come to collect miracles. Multitude give a miracle. Multitude give offering. Disciples pay tithe. Multitude are concerned about the household of God. Disciples are concerned and multitude complain. Multitude come to find fault. Disciples come to find what to do. Disciples say, here am I, send me. Multitude say, I have gone. If you need me, call for me. Multitudes say, I used to be in that church. Disciple says, when this work started, I was there. Multitude prostitutes. Disciples proclaim. And the church today is full of multitude than disciples. <laughs> multitude come for bread and fish. Disciples come to give their life. Disciples come to serve. Disciples come to give. Disciples meet the need. Disciples offer their time. Disciples sweep the floor. Multitude march on it. Who are you in the house of God? Multitude are those that can jump from one ministry to the other. Disciples are the ones that stay to build a ministry. And God told me, tell my church it's time to turn from one of the multitudes to the disciples that help to build the kingdom of God. Amen. When bread and fish is over, 
multitudes go away, disciples wait to clean the floor. Are you a disciple or a multitude? Listen, my Bible said, when the crusade was over, straight away, Jesus constrained the disciples, let's go over to the other side. Disciples go to the other side. Multitude end this side. Disciples are constrained to go. Disciples are dismissed to leave. Why? Multitude don't become part of miracle. They only come to collect. Why did he send the multitude away? Many times, God have no confidence on the multitude. Multitudes are seeking for signs. Disciples are walking signs. Is somebody hearing me tonight? Amen. He sent the multitude away. He constrained. He constrained the disciples. He forced them and said, go to the other side. Let's look at the Bible. Verse 22. Straightway. Straightway. And straightway. He constrained his disciples to get into a ship. They were commanded, get into a ship. Go over to the other side. Go before me. Why he sent the multitudes away. And the Bible says in verse 23, And when he had sent the multitudes away, repeated, When he had sent the multitudes away, Say that after me. Say it after me. Say it again. Say it again. He went up into a mountain apart to pray. Listen to the division and the dividing of this group. The multitude sent away. Disciples sent forward. Jesus went to the mountain. Jesus went higher. The disciples went forward. The multitude went backwards. Picture it with your head and your eyes. Ask yourself, if I were there that day, will he send me away or send me forward? For how many years have you been here? What forward journey have you made? I want to say this. Jesus will never send you to danger zone without him observing you where you are. He went to the mountain top. He sent them to go over. And I want to say this. No man or woman that God told to go over can go under. Did somebody hear what I said? cannot send you over and you go over and go under when God send you over you will arrive there Amen. Amen. I say you will arrive there yes. I'm saying you will arrive there yes. I say you will arrive there yes. if the Lord is the one that sent you forward no demon will stop you halfway no. well let's read verse 24 together one to go Say it loud. I didn't hear you. Read the next word to it. Say it. Toss with. Complete it. Good. That's what. That's that's okay. That's that's all I'm here for tonight. Meet C. The place of decision. When the ship was now in the midst of the sea, midway on the trip, 
the devil struck. For every dream you dream, for every vision you have, the devil will not oppose it when your ship is anchored. Devil never attack those who stand still. He only attack those going forward. He never, he never bother you when you are sleeping doing nothing for God. He only challenge you when you make a move. Why does the devil not trouble people who stand still and doing nothing? Because they have no testimony. Why does he not disturb those who have not started anything? Because if he disturbs them, they will not start. So he allows you to start first. Maybe business. Maybe marriage. When you see a girl, if you are not married, not me, I'm married, I'm saying myself. <laughs> and you love her, you call her honey, you call her mango, you call her sweet. <laughs> you call your fancy it's after you have wedded and she's packed to your house and you admit see the trial come <coughs> the devil knows that if he brings quarrel while you are still cutting you cancel it and no offense but after you have sworn Till death do us part. For better, for worse. The devil said, fine. Did you really say so? <laughs> or did you say, for better we stay. For worse we divide. And that is the problem in civilized nation. I'm told almost three out of ten marriages in civilized nation hit the rock before seven years. And I'm so glad we are not as civilized yet in third world. We are still one out of 1,000 marriages. Admit C, say that to everybody. Admit C. Say it again. Admit C. The sheep was tossed with waves. What are some of the plans you have in life that you are now in mid-sea of your life? Toss with the wave of life. <coughs> what decision have you taken and halfway the wave of life is shaking your boat of confidence? God told me there are five reasons why the devil wait first for you to get to meet C before he troubles you. He said to me, reason number one is to cause you distraction. When you are no more attracted, when you are no more enjoying what you are doing, you begin to be saying, why am I here? What is my purpose of being here? Who appreciates me? I sing night and day. I spend my money to come to church. I spend my money to sew my dress. I spend, I spend. If the devil can give you distraction, he can give you direction. Yeah. Does somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you know that when people come to church to look for healing, many of them are not concerned of what is preached. They are waiting for miracle time. They are not concerned about commitment. They are not concerned about conviction. They are not concerned. They, are not, they, are, they have no interest. Preacher, finish your preaching. Give me my miracles so I can go. That's the mercy of their life. That's where trial is. And God told me, if the enemy can distract you, he can destroy you. Don't be distracted. Don't go back to Egypt. Don't say to Moses.
Moses, we are better off in Egypt because we have three square meals a day. Egypt may give you meal, but it will never give you God. And you need God more than food. How many will say amen to that? Amen. At Missy, the devil struck. The wind came. The wave came. The ship was shaking. Why? The devil wants you, number two, to lose your confidence on the God who called you. He knows that if you lose confidence in God, you can trust nobody. Are you hearing me? Yes. Years ago, when I first met this servant of God, the devil, the worldly, the sinners, never told me how bad he was. It was pastors who told me. You are in danger zone. Stay far from Reed. And I said, God, I've heard them, leaders of big denomination in UK. So I went to my room. I bowed my knee. I said, God, these people are hosting me. They've told me that that man is terrible. What do I do? God said, draw near him. <laughs> I said, God, he said, there's something I put in him that they are afraid of. And the Lord told me that this, this man was rude, rugged, <laughs> fearless, rough. And he said, if you become his brother, your life and his life will work for my kingdom. Amen. So I, Amen. When, they, when the men called me to lunch, they said, has your friend gone? I said, the Lord told me not to let him go. <laughs> they say, you know what that means? Read is bad. I say, I'm worse. <laughs> God is looking for bad people to repair. Yeah. You didn't hear what I said. God is looking for terrible people to make terrific. <laughs> That's why for years, I became his friend. Because he's terrible. I want God to make him terrific. <laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? Mitzi is a place of decision. Mitzi is a place of choice. God will allow you to get there first. And what the devil is going to tell you at Mitzi is to say to you, you see where you are going? Everybody say Mitzi. Mitzi. Say Mitzi. Say it again. Mitzi. Try it one more time. Mitzi. Let me show you what I mean by Mitzi. This is the bank of the river. Get up, sir. <laughs> this is where you started. Come here. Stand here. That's where God asked you to go. And this is where you are coming from. He never disturbs you when you are here. Why? If he disturbs you, you will not move. This is very safe. If you stand here and God says, move forward, and the ship shake, you are going to jump out and say, praise God, I have not started. <laughs> and many good godly people have visions and program big and magnificent but as soon as they decide to step out by faith the little breeze not the wind not the storm yet not the cyclone i'm just talking about ah! what they run back and once you slide you backslide when you doubt where God bless you, you complain against it. And more than any time else in your life is when you admit sin. And God told me, tell my people, if you are in mid-sea of any vision or dream, 
he takes the same energy to go back as it takes to go forward. Why not die moving forward than to die turning back? <laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? Yes. It is better rescuers rush to save you while you are making an attempt to go forward than to turn to go back. Amen. And I pray today no matter what is confronting you in life, at the mercy of your life, whatever we send you back, may God let that thing kill you in the middle. I told God that one last week. Anything that will send me back to Egypt, and let me say, who is God? After 33 years and 3 months, I said, God, kill me, then to let me go back. To the world again. Amen. Is somebody hear the prayer I pray for myself? He takes the same energy, brother, to turn to go here and to move and go here. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> I me the wind struck. I said, God, why? He said, Missy is a place of choice. It's the only place you can choose. Here or here. Here. You passed it already. Have you never seen people tell you for the last six months I've been passing through fire? Have you seen people tell you that? I've been passing through trial for the last three months. A pastor told me this in Atlanta last Sunday. He said, Archbishop, I need your prayer. I said, why? He said, for the last three months, I've been passing through severe fire. I said, congratulations. <laughs> he said, what? I said, you were able to pass through fire for three months. I've never tried it one week. <laughs> Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. If God can take you through fire for three months, he can take you to eternity the rest of your life. I said, he said, what are you congratulating me for? I said, brother, you passed through. You didn't stop there. If you didn't pass through, you would have been dead. But God is merciful. He saw you through. And if he has led you through so far, he will lead you to the end. Amen. How many will say amen to that one? Missy is a place of choice. Missy is where God asks you. That is where Satan asks you. Whom will you obey from now? And if you obey God, he will lead you to the end. If you obey the devil, you are going to turn back. And I said, God, why? Why Missy? He said, Missy is a place you choose. Either to continue to please God when no man is saying thank you. Or to be angry that no man said thank you and leave God. 33 years ago, February 4th, January 4th, 1959, when I came to Christ, I didn't know the journey would last as long as this. I didn't know I was going to be a preacher. I only had come and follow me, and I came forward. Nobody gave me a promise of a car, a house, a wife, a child, or money. I was so stupid that I didn't ask questions. But thank God I didn't ask questions. Because if God has asked me, how much, will you, how much will I pay you? I would have said 10 pounds. Or 20 pounds. Or 1,000 pounds. And for the work he gave me today, 10 pounds couldn't have done it. <laughs> For he closed my mouth, closed my ears, took my hand. And since I started to learn to walk with God, I found that there's no storm that confronts you that God cannot lift you out of. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? <laughs> since God is building a new church, he's looking for those who will obey him 
when the wind is heavy. He's looking for those who will say, Lord, I see it. But I know you sent me. Reason number five. Why the devil tempts you at me see. The Lord told me. So you can turn your back against God. When God is no more leading you and you lead yourself. You are going to destruction. And God doesn't want us to lead ourselves. At mercy. Maybe you came here for healing. They sang first song. They sang the second one. Now you are missing. You are saying, where is the miracle? I'm glad to tell you, you are not far away. God is coming to meet you at Mitzi. He never abandoned those he sent forward. Verse 25 said, and let's read this now. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Somebody say, walking on the sea. On the sea. Everybody say that. On the sea. I didn't hear you. On the sea. I said, I didn't hear you. Walking on the sea. There's only one prime minister in the whole world who can walk on top of our troubled water. His name is Jesus. At the fourth watch, when no brother, no sister, no friend saw the disciples, Jesus, who sent them, saw them. Have you ever reached a stage in your life when husband was not big enough to help you? Wife is not big enough to help you. Have you ever had a fourth watch of your life? When either in time of sickness, at the time you thought you were going to improve, suddenly, your nerves begin to collapse. When doctors look at you and say, we've done all we know to do, but our best is not good enough. That's the time you and I need a Jesus who will come down from mountain to walk to us and say to us, be not afraid. Be of good cheers. It is I. We have a God who will come now no matter how high the hill is. Brother, I say this to you by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is about to walk towards you. He's going to walk towards you. He's coming near you. Whether you make effort or not, very soon, God is going to intervene in certain areas of your life. Where your effort has been made and it seems no progress, I see a Jesus coming down from his mountain, walking towards you. He saw them when crisis hit. Many times you and I look as if God has abandoned us. The David said I was young. Now I am old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. At the fourth watch of the night, medical doctors will tell you the easiest time to die is 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. That's when all the nerves collapse. When your pulse can hardly beat. As a matter of fact, anybody who wants to die should pray to die that time. <laughs> because you so go so less and give up so quickly. It was that time of life when all nerves, all system, every human sense, have been put to use. Sometimes you put your best money to market. And when you think it's going to improve, it collapses. And I'm here to tell you about the authority of the word of God. 
when anything you are doing is trying to go down and the wind is shaking you so much take your eye from the tossing wind look behind the wind there's Jesus coming to you the master is not far away that's why the wind is so heavy now the master is not far away anymore that's why the enemy is trying to give you confusion and I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to the devil every time if you ask me the question 200 times I will answer you 201 time Jesus is coming towards me everybody say that Jesus is coming towards me. put your hand in your chest and say it Jesus is coming towards me. he's walking near me he's, walking he's near not me. far away he's not far he sees me, he sees me. No, matter no matter how dark he's coming near me Stand up and talk with me. Stand up, stand up, stand up. My Bible says, at the fourth watch of the night, between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m., when the enemy knew there was no one they could shout to, in the front, at the back, and the side, at the front, behind, or in the front, on top or bottom. He thought that was the easiest time to kill. But the devil never knew, Dr. Reed, that Jesus was on top of the mountain. Amen. And I'm glad to tell you, in the face of your toughest storm, God is looking down from heaven. When he gets to a stage where you can no more look up or look back. And if you look around everywhere around you and God is seeming far away. I prophesy to you that God who called you is coming near you. Amen. Amen. 
my Bible said at the fourth watch of the night Jesus Jesus came walking on the sea Jesus listen to this at this time I'm talking brother they had no voice to cry to God and God didn't wait for them to cry to him before he started walking towards them that's miracle that's miracle when I haven't sent for you to come and rescue me and you start coming to me that's a miracle Amen. answer to prayer is good but no prayer and that result is greater Amen. did somebody hear what I'm saying tonight Amen. when your head is so bowed and all your friends begin to mock at you you sold out to follow Jesus if at that same moment when you are about confused to say what am I really doing here what did God send me here for if only you can clean your eyes, the master is not far away. He's coming towards you. Jesus came walking. I like the word. And Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. My question is, how was Christ able to walk on what was about to kill them my answer is because he made water water have no power over him Amen. my question is why is it that it's always at the fourth watch that the devil hit my answer is if he didn't hit you that time you will not know how big your god is Amen. but thank god when danger come close, God walks near. Amen. May I hear you say hallelujah, people? Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how dark the night is, God sees you. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how terrible the pain looks like now. The healer is near you. I see him tonight, about to stretch his hand to catch you and to say this simple word. He walking went unto them. Why did Jesus not look for a ship at 4 a.m.? There were no captains and there were no sheep. Why did he not say, Disciples! Disciples! Hello! I wanted to come, but no way! Bye-bye! <laughs> God knows there are many areas of your life if he refused to intervene that's your end and God is not mocked God is not mocked I commit to you the spirit of faithfulness catch it the vision is from God you are not in the wrong place you are not doing the wrong thing it is God who sent you and when it gets darker than you expected, look out. The master is walking towards you. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 25 said, listen to this. Verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Verse 27 said, but Jesus, straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, It is I. Be of good cheers. It is I. Be not afraid. God is saying, Be of good cheers. Be of good cheers. When it looks as if everything is going down, be of good cheer. Years ago, we were putting up a big building. I've told the story before.
everything I knew to do was done. And that building refused to move forward. Over two million pounds put in it refused to go forward because prices of things are 20 times more in Africa than here because we have money. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Every, we fasted, we pray. Every door closed. And I said, God, you've never done this before. The building is just at its decking. What am I going to do? I prayed first day, no answer. Seven day, no answer. Fourteen days, no answer. Twenty-one days, fasting, no answer. I locked myself in the room. I said, God, if you don't speak today, I'm not coming out. And I was crying. And suddenly I heard God say, Son, have you finished? <laughs> I said, finish what? He said, doing what you are doing? I said, yes, Lord. He said, you have been telling everybody, come and see my beauty. Come and see what I'm doing. He said, you never told anybody. Come and see what God is doing. That's why I decided that you should finish it. I told you I will build my church. And you have decided to build it. Oh. Is that what I did? I said, Lord, I'll give your church back to you. <laughs> you finish it. <laughs> and I give you glory. Amen. Guess what? When I removed my hands, he put his hands. And the building finished. I say he finished. Amen. I say it finished. It finished. Somebody say hallelujah. What mid-sea are you today? What is the water you are battling at the middle? The Lord sent me to tell you. Be of good cheers. Be of good cheers. Be of good cheers. You and your wife know some of our buses and our trailer we carry people with. We convey to our headquarter church, average of two million people every year, to the headquarter church with buses. The best bus we have, December 29th, that bus is supposed to carry about 60 passengers. Our children leaders put 300 children in a 60-seater bus to take them on excursion. 15 miles after Benin, they were climbing mountain and the devil set fire on the bus with 300 children. Guess what? All the 300 children came out, not one bunt. Amen. The bus was lost. And when they came to tell me, I was shattered. I told my wife, I said, honey, I'm in pain. I didn't even remember they said 300 children were there. I said, that bus, gone. Oh, the bus? <laughs> that bus? Oh, bus is gone? Oh, that bus? And again, the Lord said to me, It's not your bus, it's my bus. <laughs> and yesterday, on my way coming to London, I bought a better, bigger bus for that. <laughs> if the enemy wants you sad, tell him Jesus said to.
unto me be of good cheers. I love what you said tonight. Make your life cheerful. Don't sadden your spirit. <laughs> and every time I remember this scripture, it's from the mouth of Christ. Whatever you are doing for God, brothers and sisters, be of good cheer. When you maintain and learn the life of good cheers, you can hardly be sick. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. A merry heart that good. It worketh like medicine. No tablet can cure sorrow. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I don't know what mitzi you are. Maybe just one single person. The Lord made his servant to ask me to come for. And you are in the mystery of your business. You are in the mercy of your vision. God asked me to tell you, don't go back. If you can't move forward, stay where you are because Jesus is coming to take you forward. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Instead of going back, stand still. For they that wait upon the Lord renew their strength. Are you hearing me? Amen. Instead of talking wrong, keep quiet. Hear me. Hear me. God sent me here, maybe just for one person, about taking decision <laughs> of going back. The Lord asked me to tell you, you are not going to die. The sea will not swallow you. Jesus is coming towards you. Join hand with someone on your left and right. Join hand with someone. Find someone to join your two hands with. Where is your mercy in life? Is it in business? Is it in marriage? Where is your mercy? Where is that wind shaking you most? Where is the water tossing you so heavily? Is it in your heart? Is it in your head? Is it at your feet? How severe is the wind? Holy Spirit asked me to tell you, you are not sinking. Christ is coming. Your crisis will soon have a stop. Because Christ is the bridge over troubled water. Amen. Did somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes. Where is your mid sea? Who is the person that God asked me to tell? Don't go back. Stand fast in the liberty where with Christ have made you free. You are in the middle. Yes, but God is on top. And because God is on top, you can't go to the bottom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. God is saying, your wind will soon cease. Hallelujah. Your storm will soon be over. Amen. Don't go back. Don't go back. I want you to do something. What, that's what we do at home. We normally take people's two hands and I say, pray for one another. And the Bible commands us, pray ye for one another that ye may be healed. I want you to separate your hand now. Pick somebody. Don't let it be your wife. Pick somebody you don't know too much. I mean, not somebody you came together. Because sometimes, listen to me before you pray. Sometimes you know people so much that you, you have no courage to pray boldly from your heart. But pick somebody tonight. A word is going to flow out of your mouth that somebody at Miss C will be rescued tonight. Take someone's two hands face to face. And pray for one another. Do so now. Take someone. Take someone. Take someone. Look for someone you know need you. Find someone with problem that needs an answer. Find someone with sickness that need healing. Find someone with sorrow that needs joy. Take someone's hand. Take someone's hand. Take someone's hand. Pray.
pray. Look for someone. Look for someone. Open your mouth. Don't pray fearful prayer. Pray fearless prayer. Pray. Ask someone. What, do you, what can I pray for you about? <laughs> Ask question. Get the answer. Then pray for somebody. Open your mouth. Please. Take this many cedars. Take your 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 cedars. Deliverance tonight. Deliverance tonight, Lord. Rescue your people tonight. From the storm and mist sea. Show your power from the mouth of these your servant. Do a quick walk tonight. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Everyone say amen. amen. <coughs> Let me hear you say amen. amen. Find your way back to your seat and sit down. Please stop movement, please. Let's honor God. Let's honor God. Maybe you are here tonight. You've been in the church, but you've never been in Christ. There's no difference between you and those in the world. Maybe you are in the church, but there's a habit the devil has attacked your life with. And attached it to you for years. Every time you try to lose grip and get out of that situation, it gets worse. And you don't know what to do to be free from this habit. And it has become a sin and stigma. But you want to say to me tonight, preacher, I need deliverance and I need help. If there's anything that binds you and you want to be free, I'm not talking of the sick now. I'm talking of anybody with habit, either smoking, drinking, whatever it is. But it has become a stigma and sin. And you know that if Jesus were to come tonight, you could not make heaven because of that habit. Could I ask you with no shame, just say, the Hosa, thank God for sending you I want to be free tonight. May I ask you to come here and stand before me right now. If there's any habit disturbing your faith and your life, rush here right now. And you alone know what I'm talking about. You know what that thing is. You've been trying your best. Every time you move forward, that thing pull you back. This is your night of freedom. Brother, can you take that chair away? Put it here. Thank you. I know there are over 20 of you tonight who want to be free and free indeed. You know what I'm talking about. You know it. You know inside your heart. That thing is the rope that has pulled you back every time. You want to be free. The thing said to you, you know you are not yet. Not yet. But you do not want to remain in the cling of the enemy. I want you to come here right now. Oh, you say I've been in the church. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm in the choir. That's not the question. I'm asking you. What is that thing if you were to die tonight will stop you from making heaven? Can't you lose yourself from that chain and say, God, I hear your voice. Oh, I never took it as serious. But tonight, I want to be free absolutely. Because the Bible says, if the Son of Man make you free, you are free indeed. I want you to get up. No shame. Nobody. This is God's house. It's a house of freedom. It's a place of absolute deliverance. Get up and come here right now. We are going to pray with you. That's more than sickness. Because sickness can kill you and make you die on time. But sin can hold you. And you may not know. Let that habit take hand out of you. Come forward right now. I was telling somebody not too long ago. Aid is more kind than poverty. When aid comes, it gives you 10 years, you will die. But when poverty comes, you will enjoy it. You first of all start with, it's okay, it doesn't matter, I'm a child of God. But later you begin to enjoy it. That's the same thing with sin. Sin comes gradually. 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. One day, it matters. What is the habit binding you? God sent me to set you. Not to condemn you. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn. I come to release my people. The Holy Spirit told me two areas to minister tonight. Set those bound by habit free. So they can have the flow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Forever. There are at least about four more of you. I need to get up there now and join. I say, I thank God for talking to me. I want to be free. I'm free indeed. Move forward here, please. Thank you. Come closer. The reason you are coming out is not because you are the worst. But you just want your life to be straight with God. No hindrance. No blockage in the pipe of the Holy Spirit. That's why you are out tonight. And when the Son of Man does it, He does it free of charge. No bill, no charges, but free indeed. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Come closer, come closer, come closer. That's good. Is there anyone more who say the host, I hear you? I've been waiting for this day. To say bye-bye to the devil once and for all. I want to be free. I'm free indeed. Thank God for Christ. It's not by the works of righteousness we have done. It's by grace we are saved. That's why. Everywhere I've been to in the world. 105 nations. I have confessed more than anyone else in my life. Every day I pray sinner's prayer. Just in case, oh God, there's anything I don't even know about. But I just want my life to be free and flow with you. This is that night. It's freedom night. It's freedom night. Will you join your hand with somebody? Right now? What a great day to be alive. When this is not your memorial night, it's a day you will remember. You are going to be able to say on the 24th day, of March, I was free indeed. Say after me, my dear Father in heaven, let it come from the pit of your stomach. My dear Father in heaven, I thank you that you called me out tonight to make my life straight with you. I confess Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior, the deliverer of my soul. Tonight, I invite him to wash my soul with his blood to cleanse me, make me a new creation. Oh God, I repent of all my faults and weaknesses, Jesus, because of your blood, make me a new creation tonight. Wash me. Make me clean. Thank you, Lord. With my mouth, I confess, Jesus died for me. He rose for me. By his stripes, I am healed by his blood. I'm forgiven. Thank you, Lord. I'm washed tonight. I am now a new creation. All things pass away. All things become new from this day and forevermore. Everybody say amen. Amen. I thank you, Tana Father, for giving your life for these ones. By the authority in your word, that whom I set free on earth is free in heaven. I declare them free and loose and command them cleansed and made whole. From the crowns of your head to the soles of your feet, your blood make them whole. Amen. Now, in Jesus' name, Everybody say amen. amen. I'm going to ask you to go home. Open your eyes, look at me. This is one of the greatest opportunities 
you've ever had in your life. When you personally make personal peace with God, and that thing that troubled you before shall trouble you no more. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Say loud, I am free indeed. From now, I am loose in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. You can experience it. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idahosa is a man that believe with God all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was in Dowsa's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. And I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyodepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And fortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God on getting there. I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the 
uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Odisha. And we went to put posters all over Odisha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Lederhose University, all those. And, well, he's... He's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us, and I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Daosa. We said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes and the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. 
Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. He called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. He does have started it in 1974, 75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said there, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives.
Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. What's up? <laughs> And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, waded through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> and he said, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. See, this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you, don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead. I said what? Am I going to like God? Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl name? I said, It's Inuarata. 
I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, maybe three hours later, my father come, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swam in there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. So he said, they should take him to the room. They take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, the God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock slays. Another <laughs> <laughs> made bed to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave bed to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that had no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, 
let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer, but I just made and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy unspeakable joy in my spirit and the following day uh, we, we used to call him brother Benson he came and said where is the child you said the child is there and I called him to the room and I said you know what I did last night I didn't know uh, I, I don't know how to do it but I just knelt by my bedside and I said God if you were the one that raised that child up let me have a part of that power he said ah you have done it and I knelt down we prayed and I and I said the, the sinner's prayer and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said, that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
A leader took correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, Young Benson, Young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven the room was filled with the presence of god as benson fell to his knees before the lord wherever you want me to go i will go he prayed through the night renewing his vows to god and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation after his call benson launched into ministry work preaching from village to village the gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria established over 6,000 churches throughout nigeria ghana before 90, 1971 many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1000 to 4000 people in addition to filling the position of archbishop of church of god mission he also he, he was also president of all nation for christ bible institute president of idaosa world outreach and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people what leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa. According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, 
where he often appear on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates is a, a, a demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981, his Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors and he applied the principles he learned he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry he was very energetic hard-working one of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa he was committed and consistent and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom have bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to 
talk about his early ministry again as a youth he got converted to christianity by a certain pastor Paul, and joined his, the flagging congregation as one of the first members he was very active and converting many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable qu quotes including my god is not a poor god your attitude determine your your attitude determines your attitude it is more risky not to take risk i am a possibilitarian a big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck if your faith says yes god cannot say no among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School. Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contacts get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.